Today, we're looking at how to add subcollections to our collections page. You would think subcollections is something that's available from Shopify out of the box, but unfortunately it isn't. But if you want to use them, then watch the rest of this video. This is actually an upgraded version compared to what we saw in level three of our navigation menus video. You don't actually need that other video to make this customization, but check it out for some other navigation menu ideas. Before we start, thank you for watching this video. Many of our videos come from your ideas. So if you want to see your customization in the next video, subscribe and prompt us in the comments below. All right, let's take a look. So let's take a look at our demo store to see what we're doing today. This is a collections page and you can see our list of products as it normally would show on the collections page. We've got hoodies, long sleeve tees, t-shirts, uh, socks and sweatpants. And we might normally filter them by using our filter menus. So let's say we want to look at the long sleeves, we could just filter them out. But another way to help organize ourselves is to actually use the subcollections at the top. And this adds some extra visual component to our store. So if we want to go to our long sleeves, we can just click this link and we only see the long sleeves. Uh, and so that's what we're going to be adding today. To add this customization, we're going to need to create a new meta field and edit some code. Don't worry if you don't know how to do these things. I'll show you exactly what you need to do. What we've done here is we've installed a fresh new version of Dawn. Uh, we'll, we'll use Dawn as the demo theme, but it should work for any of the free themes. So if you take a look at our collection page now, you can see that those subcollections are no longer showing. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding this back in. The first step is to add a meta field. So to do that, we're going to go to settings, custom data, and we're going to select collections, and we're going to add a definition. And we're going to call this subcollection list. This namespace and key is actually really important. It needs to be exactly as it's shown here. So custom dot subcollection underscore list because the code is going to be referencing this. And then next we're going to select type. We're going to select collection right there. Uh, and then it's gonna be list of collections and then we'll save. So now we've created our meta field. And what this meta field is for is it's going to be used to specify what sub collections are in any individual collection. So what do I mean by that? Let's go to the collections area, go into our clothing collection. And we want to say that in this clothing collection, there's going to be a number of sub collections. To do that, we've got our new meta field that we just created, and we can select the ones that are relevant. So in this case, we'd say t-shirt, socks, hoodies, sweatpants, and long sleeves. Right, so now that we've selected these five collections, these are the ones that are going to be shown on the collection page for clothing. We can even rearrange the order. So the order that is shown here is gonna be the order it shows up on the collection page. So if we want our long sleeves to show up after t-shirts, we can show it like that. And then we can move our socks to the bottom, let's say. So let's, uh, let's just save that. And now we've prepared our collection page. Now, just adding meta field isn't enough. We also need to edit some of the code. So we'll come back to our themes area and we're going to edit the code of our theme. But before doing that, make sure to duplicate your theme just in case anything goes wrong, then you can always revert back to the old version. So let's edit code. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new section. So we can go to the sections area here, add a new section, and we're going to call this collection list custom. Let's delete what's in here already. So we have an empty file and we're going to copy and paste our code. Okay, and now we're going to save. And that's pretty much it on the code side. We can go and customize our theme so we can open up the theme editor and then we can visit the default collection. Uh, let's change the preview to our clothing collection. So now that we're in our clothing collection, first thing we're gonna do is let's just quickly update our uh, our filtering so that we're using a vertical layout. So this is my preferred layout. You don't have to do it this way, but uh, this is what we're going to be doing for this demo. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to add our collection section now. So if we scroll to the bottom, you can see here there's this new collections list custom that wasn't there before. So we can add that in. So now we can see that we have our sub collections that we've added in earlier using the meta fields. 
And we've got a number of settings here that we can adjust. So let's say we think that these are a little bit too large. We can adjust this to add some additional columns. All right, so now we've got five across. And then we probably want to move this up a little bit. So let's bring this here. So now we've got this under the title, uh, but above the products. So we can always visit the individual sub collections uh, once we land on this page. We've also got some other features here. So we can change the padding uh, on mobile. We can say, OK, maybe the one column is a little bit too large. So we can change that to two columns. Um, or better yet, we can even change it to swipe on mobile. So if, uh, if we're on mobile, we can actually just swipe across. And that way, it doesn't take up too much space on the screen. OK, so why don't we save that and come back to our demo store and just do a refresh. And there we go. So now we've added our sub collections back onto our collections page. Uh, if we visit the mobile version, we can just hit this little button here, and it gives us the preview of the mobile version. Uh, we can see here that we're swiping across on our collections. All right, so that's the bulk of it, but there's a couple of other things that we need to look at before we can say this is complete. So first of all, there's going to be a few different ways we can present our collections. So the first way is what we're looking at right now. We've got our sub collections up top and our products underneath. In other cases, if we visit this collection here, we may not have any sub collections up top and just the products. And there could be a third option where we're only showing the sub collections and no products. So why don't we take a look at that third option now? So we're back on our list of collections on the Shopify admin. And we're going to take a look at this blank test collection that I've already created here. Um, and it's pretty much a new collection. There's no products in here, no sub collections. So let's just add some sub collections. So let's maybe add some shoes and some socks. OK, so we can see here. Now that we have a collection with some sub collections, but we don't have any products in there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to jump into our navigation, right? So on, under online store, you can go to navigation and let's add a new menu item. And we're going to add the blank test collection to our menu. OK, so let's save that. And then we're going to reload our page. So we now have this blank test collection here. And if we select that, you can see here we've got our sub collections up top as expected. And no products are being shown at the bottom as expected. But you can still see there's this sort menu. And there's also this message here saying there are no products. And this is probably not what we want to show in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to make one more modification where we can hide this message whenever there are no products in the collection. So let's go back to the code. And we're going to open up the file main collection product grid. And right near the top, right after the end style, we're going to first copy and paste our if statement. And we're going to stick it right there. So this is going to check if the collection has more than zero products. And if it does, then it will execute as normal. But if it doesn't, it's going to skip the entire section and just not run it. And in this way, we can get rid of the message that was showing. So now let's refresh. And it no longer shows. And so now we can go back and take a look at our different options. So we've got collection with the sub collections and products. We've got our collections with just the products. And we've got our collections that are actually just a collections list with uh, the sub collections. And those are the three options that we can have. And this gives you a lot of flexibility to think about how you want to organize your products and how you want your customers to be navigating your store. Now, some of you who may be a little bit more familiar with Shopify may be asking, hey, there already is a collections list. Why aren't we using that? So let's take a look at why. So here's the collections list. And um, let's bring this up above our custom one. So we've got very similar settings here, right? So we can actually change this to five. And we can 
Okay, and then let's say, let's select the collection. So we can select t-shirt. Let's select that. And then long sleeves. Hoodies. And we can add a couple more collections. Um, and we can complete this by adding sweatpants and socks there as well. Um, but let's just save for now. So if we come back to our demo store and we go back to our clothing collection, we will see, okay, it'll look very similar, right? It's got that same, those same five collections up at the top. But if we actually enter any of these collections, it's still going to show those five collections up top. And if we go to our blank tests, um, it'll still show it. So this is because it's actually in the theme itself, which means any collection that is using the default collection is going to be showing this collection list. Whereas with the custom one that we created, it's reading out of the meta fields. And so if the collection doesn't have any sub collections specified, it just won't show. So this allows us to conditionally show the sub collections only if we want them to. All right, so that's it for today. We've added sub collections to our collections page, and this is great for better product organization and navigation. As always, if anything didn't make sense, just let me know in the comments below and I'll clear that up. And of course, if you want to see any other customizations, just add it below as well. That's it for today. I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next one.